All right, guys. As many of you know, we're out here working on this electric cafe racer, getting everything buttoned up this week. Um, we've been working pretty diligently, getting really close. We got the new sprocket on. It's the 13 tooth. It's going to have the top speed by about 11% from what we had it at previously. We got a little roller protector there on that chain that I just added today. Fiberglass for the seat has been completed. We're going to be doing our own upholstery on this. The uh, Put an extra brace in here to help strengthen this up so that it wouldn't separate when we started pulling on it with the leather. Uh, but we're going to put some foam down and then use adhesive to connect the leather to that foam and then around the sides there they'll slide right in. It's got some bolts going through to stick on there. So that was a project for tonight. We're also looking at how to attach this little cluster here. We're going to put a GPS unit just like the Chinese electric sport bike has on it. Uh, I've got the amp meter and the and the uh, battery temperature meter that we're going to have above and below that. We're still looking for a place to connect the key. We got another, an actual key switch, uh, which I'm actually my project right now is getting that set up. I've added a relay here and I'm setting it up. Previously, everything was just kind of running through this switch that we had. Uh, we didn't have a lot of power being pulled for the headlights or anything like that yet so it wasn't necessary to get that set up. We got ourselves a 40 amp relay here and I'm wiring it in so that on the key switch this will activate and then all the systems will turn on so you won't have that voltmeter and amp meter active all the time. It'll only be active when the key is turned on. It'll also control the 5 volt system so that the GPS display up here only turns on when the key turns on so everything's controlled normally as a, a, a key switch normally would have it uh, operate. So I'm still getting this modified. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera on time-lapse so I can get this captured here. I'll probably try to do a nice little close-up of that. Um, as soon as I finish that up, I'll just test the systems out, make sure they all work. I'm gonna connect it up right now, temporarily back into this, but just through the relay. Reason being, we don't know where the key switch is gonna go yet. It's still kind of being figured out. Otherwise, everything's finalized. As soon as I get this in, and we extend cables if we need to to get it up to get the uh, battery temperature, volts and amp meters up to this point. We can start to do some cable management. Obviously everything's been kind of cluttered in here. It's getting a little better, uh, but we'll get this buttoned up here with some zip ties and pull it all together. We did manage all the cables on each of the sides here. So it's starting to look clean. I just gotta make sure it all routes through that relay. We'll get that display built. And then pretty much this thing's ready to rock. I know the engine is still working on getting the wiring harness installed. He's done it more than I have, honestly. I've done a lot of the power supply stuff, but not a whole lot of the motorcycle wiring in that sense. Um, so we're gonna be able to remove some of the stuff in here. A lot of the sensors that go to engine components we can take out, uh, but a lot of the stuff that's just for signals, horn, that kind of thing, we're still gonna put a horn in here. We got one over on the bench over there that we'll, it will add in here, you know, little things like that. But I'm gonna try to get this relay installed tonight, get everything rerouted, make sure that's working, and then tomorrow and the next days we can start to install some of the odds and ends so this week we can get it all finished up. All right, we got it wired through the relay now. So this DC to DC converter is powered by the battery before it goes in the contactor. So this has power all the time. This runs power to the relay and this runs power to the switch, which is obviously just still this switch here. So now every other system, when you close this switch, it'll send an electromagnetic signal, which then closes this through here. So what that means now is when you turn the switch, which I'll, I'll show you the um, I might even try to install it tonight, we'll see the other switch. Everything's dead now until I turn this. Now even the display is connected to this, but previously that was connected straight to the DC to DC converter. Benefit now is obviously we can run a higher current because we're running through this relay. So we can run the headlights and everything. We turn the key on, it's gonna activate all the systems. And then your, obviously your th controls on the handle will work still. 
um, but we don't have any power and nothing's wasted. Previously, we would always have to have this sucking power, so it's not pulling any energy until you pull this switch on. So it's gonna control it from there. So, big improvement. Um, all I've gotta do ultimately is chop this off, stick on, I got that already. Stick on this key switch. It's a four wire, but two of them are closed when it's in the off position and two of them are closed when it's in the on position. So as I understand the way this is wired, you just need to connect these two, the black and the red, in place of the black and the red here. And we turn the key on, it should do the same thing. These other two wires, we can just ignore then. It's just a super simple switch. Turn the key on, everything's active. From there then, um, we can, you know, have the switches on the bike control certain things. The horn's not gonna come on, for example, because you gotta be able to push the horn button. Uh, the headlights won't come on unless you have it in the headlight on position. Uh, so we'll be basically able to set all of that up. So the only thing left, figure out where that key goes. We're probably gonna put it somewhere, you know, unconventional. Uh, there's not a lot of room up here on the top. Uh, we have to be creative with how I do this fiberglass uh, console on top for it to fit there. So we gotta put that key switch on, and we gotta extend the battery temp and the voltage and amp meter so that those can be up here above and below the GPS display. For whatever reason, that ignition switch didn't work with just the black and red wires. So I've gone ahead and just quick disconnected it, put this back on. I'll troubleshoot another day. It's a little bit late, but at least now when Angel wakes up, this will turn on for him. So we'll be able to work with that. I'm still going to install a 12 volt to 5 volt converter. I'm going to just stick that on one of these free wires here. And that'll allow us to connect in the 5 volt USB connection for the display. Um, I'm not going to do that today though, I'm going to do that after I've built, I'm going to kind of do the fiberglass for this next, I think is the next stage. Um, beyond that, this thing's, I mean realistically that's like the last thing that I've got to do. So we'll get on that, we'll get that installed and then obviously troubleshoot as needed. I'm still going to reprogram controller a little bit to try to get a little more juice out of it. I'm still leaning towards the possibility in the future of getting the software to program a Sebcon and potentially putting a Gen 4 size 6 on here. And the Sebcon Gen 4 size 6 is effectively the controller that the highest powered zeros run on currently. So we'll get that. Uh, hopefully I can convince Nick to, to get one of those in the future. Um, but obviously that's a, a future project. Uh, if we can get this one with the Kelly controller cranking to an acceptable speed with an acceptable acceleration, I could drive it like this for a long time. The one thing that's the same regardless is gonna be the range, and we're still gonna get a very significant range out of this setup, so that'll be fun. And as long as it gets you the speed that you need and it gets you where you need to go, then, you know, no real issues. Just, it is nice to be able to do wheelies, you know? So, <laughs> we'll see if we can get that get that sorted at some point. Uh, we'll reprogram and dive into some of the menu shit a little bit later. I'll record all that for you guys on this channel. So, obviously, you'll see the summaries and the outcomes on the Inja. But I want to get a little bit more behind the scenes with you guys. So that'll be it for today. Um, next time I'm working, I'll give a little bit of a, another recap as well. But we'll catch you guys next time.